Hello YouTube, this is Dr. Ronald W. Satz, founder and chair of the International Society of Unified Science and president of TransPower Corporation, a commercial and custom software manufacturing and certified systems engineering company. I work as a theoretical physicist and as a systems and mechanical engineer. And yes, uh, TransPower Corporation is up and running in this pandemic. We're not seeing clients, but we can mode them in to fix problems. And we're still shipping all of our books and software. All right, today is with most of my screencasts, we're going to be discussing the reciprocal system. In this case, the reciprocal system microcosmos database. We've already covered all the solid state properties, so now we're going to move on to the liquid, vapor, and gas matter properties. You can see on the screen here, the left side, this is the micro, microcosmos database main menu, and on the right side, we have the Macrocosmos database main menu. I've already covered all of these topics in previous screencasts, so be sure to check those out. I'm going to click here for volume and density. This is what we're going to cover today. And I've decided to use water, H2O, as the, the sample uh, record. And for the solid state properties, I used iron for the liquid and vapor and gas vapor properties, we're going to use H2O. So you can see here at the top, we have the element compound mix, that's, that's the symbol H2O. In some cases, the vapor gas symbol is going to be different. Uh, but anyway, here it is here. We have the description, H2O can be ice, water, or steam. It's floor number one. Atomic molecular weight is here. Melting temperature is here. And again, atomic molecular weight is here. Now, uh, I'm not going to, well, here's delta V. This is the specific volume increment due to solid molecules and any temperature, so I'm not going to explain that right now. Here's the melting temperatures here at external pressure, which is calculated. So, uh, And you can see there's only a slight difference because of the external pressure it goes from 273.15 to 273.26. Okay. Now you have to you have to look at the tooltips here. This is for a liquid now. See, this is liquid here, we have vapor here, and we have gas here. So there are three divisions on this layout. Okay, let's go through these terms. Look at the tooltips. Enter the number of elements in a com in the compound. It's two in this case. The total number of atoms in the compound, three. Uh, the number, let's look at the tooltip again, and the number of close packed groups per molecule in the solid state. Total number of close packed groups per molecule in the liquid state. Number of initial units extrapolated back to zero, uh, let me get this right, zero K for specific heat of the liquid. The number of structural groups having internal motion, uh, solid-like vibration. Number of liquid thermal groups per molecule. Number of liquid structural groups per molecule. Number of liquid volumetric groups. It is equal to the volume of the molecule divided by, let's go through this, the cube of the time region natural unit space. Normally it's rounded up or down to the nearest energy or a half energy, but there are exceptions. This one is in a number of liquid temperature units. Number of units, atoms, or molecules uh, resisting external pressure. That's as a group, and you see it's nine. So nine of these group together to resist external pressure. And here starts at 40% and, and iterate until the calculated melting temperature equals the observed melting temperature. So this is a this percent solid at at, uh, at at the given temperature. And then um, this is the internal pressure of the liquid and it's 4155 atmospheres. Now look, I understand you're not really going to understand these terms unless you read uh, the liquid vapor gas paper in my work Existence and Interactions, a Computational Treatise of the Reciprocal System, the True Theory of Everything. I go into great de detail explaining all these parameters for each molecule. 
Um, but once you've read that, then you can come back to the database and and see why we have all these parameters. Okay, and then we have a calculated method for the critical temperature. Um, there are five different types. And uh, you can choose one for sum of two terms within of t in the second term. Uh, there's another one here for subtraction of second term from first with nt in both terms. Three, the sum. Let's go back. And the sum of the two terms with nt only in the second, the subtraction of second term from the first, and the nt only in the second term. If none of these methods work, then choose five. So anyway, one is the most common. Critical temperature, um, calculate and observe. So we calculate 654 and observe to 647 Kelvin. Everything is in Kelvin, by the way. Critical pressure, atmospheric, and calculated and observed. Again, it's pretty close, 213 versus 217. Now, we input a temperature of 600 with 500 atmospheres applied to water. So what do we get for the specific volume? That's in centimeter cubed per gram. We get 1.51516. We get the density is 0 0.65 is uh, 999. Uh, Yaws calculates uh, 0.64. Yaws is uh, Carl Yaws. He wrote the book um, Chemical Properties. It's really a collection of empirical regression equations. That's what we use to compare the theoretical results to empirical results using Yaws regression equations. It's very important. It's, it's, a, it's an excellent work. Totally non-theoretical, but that's what we need. We need to verify the theory by looking at the empirical or experimental data as represented by a regression equation. Okay, percent solid liquid vapor gas molecules within a liquid. So in this particular case, uh, at the temperature that we're assuming here, uh, let's see where the, yeah, 600 K and 500 atmospheres, uh, we're saying that the percent solid is, is small, it's 0.15, whereas it's 39.85 uh, uh, gas and, and 60.15 uh, liquid, okay? And you would expect that because after all, this is 600K, it's way above the normal uh, melting temperature. Okay. Now I calculate the bulk modulus uh, temperature and pressure. So this is um, uh, of course, uh, you know, versus the observed. The compressibility inverse atmospheres is here, and that's observed which you can enter in, you know, whatever. And the volume ex expansivity in per Kelvin from Yaw's Yaw's regression equation is that. Uh, and here's the option, use vapor pressure, this external pressure, you can choose no or yes for that. Okie doke. Uh, now the specific volume, okay, now we have two, two temperature inputs here, the heat sink and heat source and the delta. So we calculate the specific volume here and here, and that's the difference. The density in grams per cubic centimeter here, here, and the Yaw's regression coefficient system. We get this from Carl Yaw's book. These are the regression coefficients. Critical specific volume, we calculate the liquid, liquid vapor, vapor. Uh, this is the, the ratio of the critical gas volume to the critical liquid volume here. Deviation from ideality, x values, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go too far into this. Um, all right, so this covers all the liquid stuff. Ordinarily, when you use this program, you'll be inputting the temperature and pressure. And then you'll be, you know, what you really want to know is what the density is. And there you have it. Uh, and th these are fixed. All these structural constants are fixed. Okay, now let's just jump to vapor here for a moment. The input temperature and pressure, again, it's in Kelvin and atmospheres. A centric factor for calculating the saturated vapor. Um, this is from Yaws or from Reed. And then we can calculate specific volume critical vapor, specific volume simple vapor, specific volume gas. So that's the sum of all these. 
that's a total single phase. And the viral, now, now this is a, this is calculated from the viral form. Now this is empirical to four terms of the red lake Klong equation. We use this again to check on the theoretical calculation. And uh, here we have the vapor pressure. Yaws gets this number. Here are the uh, coefficients in the Yaws equation. Dual phase, superheated, uh, virial gas volume. Okay. That's okay. That's really part of the gas. So now we're, here's the third section. Again, we put in the temperature and the pressure. We want to get the specific volume. This is the ideal, you know, based on the ideal equation. This is the real, uh, uh, okay. And again, we have a, a, a sink and a source, and we get the specific volume. It's ideal calculation, the real calculation, the real, uh, ideal, real, and, and the real here is the reciprocal system, okay? So, make a note of this. At the critical temperature of the gas, uh, uh, the reciprocal system volume will be two-thirds that of the ideal gas. So, that's kind of interesting. Um, and this is the virial. So the virial calculation is off here in this case. It's way off. Uh, so you really, you know, you just can't use it. Here's the heat source. And here's the, uh, the delta. And then we calculate the densities again. Unfortunately, the virial equation doesn't work too well in this in case. Uh, so Radley Kwan, sometimes the Radley Kwan uh, equation is okay, but boy, not in this case. So anyway, uh, well, I mean, that, that's pretty deep, but I, I suggest you read the paper on liquid vapor and gas matter properties or the reciprocal system in my work, Existence and Interactions. Okay, well that wraps it up for today. I know this is kind of technical. Uh, but once you understand the paper, you'll be able to understand the, the layout there. It's basically how we calculate the density of liquids, vapors, and gases. Okay, so I'm just going to review the microcosmos database covers solid matter properties like interatomic distance, valence, specific heat, energy and entropy, thermal expansion compressibility, electrical and magnetic properties, isotopes, and spectra, atomic spectra specifically. And today we covered volume and density for liquid vapor and gas matter properties. We will be covering specificity, energy and entropy, viscosity and surface tension, and electrical and thermal uh, conductivity for liquid vapors and gas matter properties in the near future. The microcosmos database also covers cosmic elements and subatomic particles. Cosmic elements and material cosmic subatomic particles, and of course, photon properties. It also includes a great graphics package. The macrocosmos database we've already covered in previous screencasts. It covers the universe as a whole, galaxy clusters and groups, galaxies, star clusters, stars, planets, moons, minor bodies, nebulae, like gas and dust, and voids. If you want to jump right to events, you can just click that. And it also includes a great graphing program. So what I've done is to make Doobie Larson's reciprocal system theory fully computational. The simplest possible treatment of theory is my work. The Unmysterious Universe has all the concepts, a lot of diagrams, very little in the way of mathematics. It's the simplest possible treatment. But if you do want all the math, please obtain my work, Existence and Interaction and Interactions, a computational treatise of the reciprocal system, the true theory of everything. So near 11 pages in the PDF, 11 slides in the PowerPoint file. Thousands and thousands of equations, diagrams, figures, tables. You name it, it's in there. It'll take you months to go through it. Once you've read that, then you come to the two database modules here, and then uh, this will make a lot more sense to you. Keep in mind that quantum mechanics can't do any of this. It can't do you can't use quantum mechanics to calculate the properties of liquid vapors and gases. You cannot do it. But you can with the reciprocal system of theory, and I've just shown it. We do have structural factors, which you have to determine, but that's it. 
Okay, now my theoretical physics mentor, Dewey B. Larson, was also a theoretical economist, and I've made his work in economics also fully computational. That's in my software program called Optimal Economist and Implementation of Larsonian Econophysics. It explains the microeconomics of individuals, businesses, and business sectors, and macroeconomics of whole countries and regions. It completely supersedes Keynesian economics. Uh, it'll help you understand economics far better than any of your uh, college textbooks. Now, the, the two database modules and the economics work have been substantially reduced in price due to the recession. They're all uh, $95 now, and we provide free phone and email support for anyone who's purchasing um, these programs. Okay, now. I can lead you to the water, but I can't make you drink. So I have to ask you, please study the reciprocal system and prove it for yourself. And thanks for your attention.